If you don't have a portfolio as an XR designer, you will most likely not get a job in this field. That may sound pretty harsh, but that is really the reality of um, hiring designers in the spatial field. I talk to a lot of executives, I talk to XR designers, I'm hiring myself and if I get an application that does not have a portfolio, most likely it is a 99% no already. If you want to avoid being ignored and rejected and yeah, people just ghosting you basically, then this video is for you because here in this video I want to give you all the best tips and tricks how to build a really amazing portfolio that will make you a top tier applicant I promise let's start with the first one you want to showcase your best and relevant work in your portfolio if you are aspiring XR designer you don't want to show some um, 2d mock-ups of websites that you build I mean you can do it if you have it but if, if that's the only thing you have that is really unfortunate let's say because as an XR designer you want to have an XR design portfolio so really match the job application you have match it with the um, skills and tools I already did a skills and tools video you can check out after this one of course and um, really also the applications that you are going to build also show your tech skills such as um, game engines if you use them and maybe 3d modeling but most importantly you want to showcase your prototypes that you build in XR now you may ask okay yeah this is a pretty complicated like how do I even get started and building my own XR projects and prototypes as a designer who may not be able to code well this is where shape 6r comes in shape 6r is the go-to standard for creating prototypes in AR and VR you can design you can prototype you can communicate all of these amazing applications that you will be prototyping and the cool thing is you can do it for free everything on the quest they are also a official collaboration partner on our XR design course so you can even learn all of these things um, directly from me and shapes together so that should be really really helpful check out the link in the description there you can um, yeah, create your account and sign up and everything so the next action step that you can do is yeah build something inside of shape 6r the cool thing is you can already showcase it on their website so you don't even need to like set up your own website your own blog or something like this you can really use the link the id code and then already give it to other people and they can check out your experience so that is also really handy number two the next really important thing that helps you to build an amazing portfolio is you want to showcase your thought process like how did you end up to the end result you don't want to just show the end result over here I mean that's already good but if you show the beginning like your idea your scribbles maybe maybe you had some Figma sketches you had some notion document whatever it is showcase like the the journey to the application because that gives us a window inside of your brain which is really important, really helpful. It shows us how you think, it shows us how you tackle problems, how you solve issues really. It is a lot more of a story rather than just seeing the finished end result. So that is really helpful to really showcase the process of how you build the application. As an action step here, again, document your process. If you have some experiences already in your portfolio, then you can maybe look for some old scribbles. I mean. I think it will also be ethically fine if you rebuild these scribbles and then put them there. I mean, if it's like the truth, then it's totally fine. But um, that is something that is really helpful. Number three, and please, for the love of God, give some context on your project. I've been participating in I don't know, like probably 30 plus game gems and hackathons already. So I've built a lot of smaller applications that I back then used as a portfolio as well. And uh, I've hosted, I don't know, probably seven, eight or so game gems already, maybe even 10 or so. And that is a mistake that I did back then with many applications, but a lot of our students do as well, which is they upload the app or the experience and then they don't explain anything. Like it's like, yeah, I mean, how am I Am I supposed or anybody else supposed to know what this is about? So give some context, give information, a two sentence paragraph. I mean, you can even use ChatGPT to write it for you, but have some information about your project. So what did you build? Why did you build it? What problem does it solve? If it does solve a problem, if not, then what kind of like creative expression is it? What are the outcomes? What was the goal of this um, project really? 
all of these things are extremely helpful and then also some metadata like how long did it take you to build the project who did you have on your team did you do it alone did you have a team how was like the separation over there if you used any assets from the asset store or any other third-party tools what did you use just for the sake of completion and people can get a better understanding of you and that is really helpful nobody does it i don't know why but that is already something that uh, makes it a lot easier to actually review any of your work action step here add some context to your already existing projects if you don't have any then don't forget that step number four and this is also something that i really try to push um, my students to do as well like we work with universities that also teach xr design and development and there we have these workshops and i always tell my students okay this is really important use a lot of media in your presentation so when you have it hosted somewhere on itch.io on shapes on your own blog on your own website add some images please add some cool images like they that showcase your experience because most likely the whole world will not download the apk put it on the quest and then play it like that is unlikely people will judge you on these small little things they already see so have some images maybe some gifs and really 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 cool what you can do is have a small tldr video that's how i call it like 60 seconds video i mean it doesn't have to be vertical whatever but have it like a small less than one minute video so people attention spans are like in check basically because they will also not watch like a half an hour presentation of your project which will be very unlikely like what kind of project should you have that is like it takes half an hour to explain so have a short video explain it make it really cool really nice there are like a lot of ai tools already that help you do that one as well if you can build like an xr prototype using shapes xr and upload it to some platform you will also be likely able to do a small video edit on that one as well that is extremely helpful action step here i would say the tldr video is the most important one because then you can also use it to um, share it on social media etc other people can share it as well so that is it's just like a win-win for everybody so ideally you have it sorted from the newest and probably the best one at the very first and then like the more you scroll down you you more you like you go to the next pages the older the projects get you don't want to have some random cardboard projects like very prominent at the very front when you just start learning anything and then the best were like hidden behind like that doesn't make any sense so have the order in mind that the best stuff and the most relevant stuff is the first that is really helpful and you should really see your project as a never-ending work in progress i mean unless you're like fully satisfied you have a job like you don't want to focus on the portfolio at all anymore then like make a pause and keep on working on it at some point when you look for a job again or something like this that is really helpful to always have it in the back of your mind as a never ending project because it never ends because you always learn like now my portfolio is basically my youtube channel and my company immersive insiders all of the projects we have been building that's my project that's my portfolio that's what i show to potential partners or something like this try to show the new skills and things that you have learned during the process because the most important thing that you can showcase is your growth basically that is amazing like even if you start with shitty projects which is normal like go to any youtuber on the planet see the first videos and see like how bad they are and then just see how much better they get over time and that progression is beautiful for like we as employers like i mean i'm also employing a new xr designers in the future so if you're interested let me know uh, i will leave a link in the comments or in the uh, description but that is something really 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 helpful for us to see that we see okay that person started like on this level and it just got better and better and better and better that is so 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 nice if you have this and the right company culture fit you got the job most likely again that is something that is so 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 powerful quick action step here delete anything that is um, not adding value to your portfolio if you have any random projects that don't make any sense and then sort them from most awesome to least awesome and the last one work on your personal branding and this is not directly related to your portfolio but it can be really helpful like first of all make it easy for others to reach out for to you like add your social links all of that stuff like just some administrative small little things but they add on top of it like for example like you have your portfolio but people don't know how to contact you like that would be kind of ridiculous right so you, ideally you have an image of you really really important please show your face from the best side 
and um, then you can really be sure that people don't think it's like a bot or something like this like people have a human connection if they see your face also if you apply to any company like in your cv please don't send your cv without an image of you like i mean they will see you anyways <laughs> they will see your face <laughs> anyway so just put it on the cv put it on your portfolio put it on your social profiles again they will just see it anyways an action step here start working on your personal brand to really level up and become the like top one percent of applicants because again if you start working on your personal brand and i can say this from experience like even back then companies will ask you to work for them like you don't even have to apply it just like you become like a magnet people will be like hey please work for us anyway when i was working uh, in my second last company basically and i got to the latest one they asked me if i want to work at them like i didn't even apply actually and that happened to like three companies because i had like a portfolio i was always just like here this is the app that i built and then kind of like they were like hey do you want to work for us i'm like sure why not what are the conditions so it switches the order it's insane it's really powerful this is something i will also talk about in the in a future video so definitely stay tuned if you have any questions let me know in the comments below if you want me to cover more of these things i'm super happy to do so whatever it is let me know and if you want to bring your career to the next 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 level and really like push your personal brand check out this video thank you so much for listening and as always i see you in the next one